fly I want to tie for you today is a fly I call a simplified paradrake. And a paradrake is a great pattern because it gives a really awesome um, silhouette of a, of a mayfly. And I think size and silhouette are the two main contributing factors. And uh, Next to presentation, of course, uh, getting a, a fish to eat your fly. So this uh, fly is a ver version of a paradrake I call a simplified paradrake. And I think it just simplifies the tying uh, a little bit. And I'll show you how I do it. We're going to start out by using some um, deer hair. Now you can certainly tie this with elk hair as well. But if you're going to tie with deer hair, you need some that's, that's fairly long. You're going to see why in a minute. We need some length on these fibers uh, in order to tie this in. So I'm just going to clip a little bit off here. And it'll take a while for you to kind of figure out how much of this you're going to need. So I'm going to clean all of that that fuzzy under fur and short fibers out of there. Some guys use a, a brush or a comb or whatever, but I just flick it around a bit and get rid of most of it. The size of clump of deer hair you're going to need it depends on, you know, the size of the hook. This is a size 12 Tiemco 100 BL with some tan thread attached to it. Um, this looks like it's going to be a bit too much, so I'm just going to take a little bit out of there. And I think that looks like it might be better. So we're going to place this in a, in a hair stacker. In there. Tap it on the bench a few times. And then we will take it out. It looked to me like there was a uh, one longer fiber in there. No, it's, it's all right. So that, uh, there is a longer fiber in there, yeah. So the natural ends of this deer hair is going to actually form the wing on this fly. And, you know, you, ha you have to, uh, it's going to be a little bit longer than the hook shank. We need to bring this up to it. So just in front of halfway on this thing. And we need just a little bit more than a, a shank length here. And we want to take a couple of loose wraps there and then draw it down tight. And then we never want to go in front of that first wrap we took. We always want to go back behind that first wrap, but not very far, but we need to really crank it down. This is the only place where this deer hair is really tied securely to the shank of the hook. So I need to take several wraps are really good there. And you notice that I have not really let go of these butt ends of this thing because we need to keep control of them because we're going to work our thread back down the, the body of this fly and actually make an extended body out of it by going beyond the end of the, the bend of the hook. And the way we do that is to come over top of the material and then between the material and the vise. Over top of the body material and between the material and the vise until we get out to the point where we think that that's going to be long enough. And we'll take three or four or five wraps right there. And once we think we're good there, then we start to spiral our way back up that extended body, working our way up toward the hook shank. Once we're back on the hook shank, we will work our way up to where we tied that material on. Now, you can let go of it now, and we can we'll stroke it back here, and we'll just trim it off just behind that bunch of wraps we took back here. And it flares out a little bit, but that's okay. That doesn't bother me at all. Then we're going to come up and we're going to take and stand up that clump of fibers. Take a bunch of wraps right in front of them. To stand them up. Once you're standing up, we're going to go Take one wrap behind them. I'm going to come around the base of them. We take several 
turns. We're going to work our way up a little bit. That's too high. Work our way up that clump of hair a little bit and then work our way back down and form a nice little platform there on which to wind some hackle. That also, of course, tightens that clump of deer hair up. Before we wind the hackle, though, we want to cover up these wraps that we used to tie the deer hair on in the first place. So we're just going to take a little bit of dubbing, some tan dubbing that's close to the same color as you can get, I guess. And we're going to take and just cover up those wraps. And while we're at it, we're going to come in front and zigzag back and forth and cover up all the wraps underneath here as well. Once we're in front of the thing here, now we're going to take and we're going to attach our hackles. And, and for this fly, I'm going to use two hackles, kind of an Adams type of a deal. I'm going to use a grizzly saddle hackle and a brown saddle hackle. And uh, we'll just cut them off there. And, and we'll uh, put one on top of the other so the butt ends are even. Get them lined up here and we'll, we'll take and just peel the fibers off the ends of those things a little bit so we have a, the bare stem sticking out and we're going to tie them on in front of our hackle wing or yes our deer hair wing and I like to leave a little bit of bare stem bare hackle stem right there between where I tied it in and where the fibers start. And then we're going to bring that up and then we're going to wrap our way up that wing. Two turns going up, another two turns coming down. When we get back down, we're going to pull all those hackles up out of the way like that and come underneath that last wrap. And what I like to do is I like to clip a pair of hackle pliers on the the hackles at this point just for some weight just to hold them down there so now we can stroke that already wound hackle up out of the way and tie that hackle stem off on the hook shank um, I don't understand why people think it's a better idea to tie the hackle stems on the base of the wing I, I don't know, it doesn't make any much sense to me, but uh, when you pull it back out of the way, you make sure you have to pull your thread out of the way too when you cut that off or you'll cut your thread. I learned that the hard way several times. What we want to do to finish this fly off now is take some more of that same dub dubbing we used to hide the uh, thread wraps and we'll just spin a bit of that on a, the thread. Pull our hackles back up out of the way, and we're going to build up the front of the, the body of this fly in front of that wing. And we'll come up here and make a few wraps and tie off the head. Put a whip finish on there. I find it two whip finishes of four-ish turns makes almost indestructible fly. So there we have a fly I like to call a uh, simplified peregrine. It's a good fly. I use lots of these from. Uh, early season on the March Browns right through the green drakes later in the year and gray drakes in the fall. It's a good pattern, floats well, catches a lot of fish. Mm -hmm.